Hi, my name is Scott Good, and I'm here to show you the DQL Explorer. This is an app that was built in React by Dimitri Prosper and myself, and it's to show ways that, that you can use the new Domino query language that was added in version 10 of Notes in ways that don't necessarily require you to be a programmer. And so this interface is, is hopefully a first iteration. We're going to make it open source available, and hopefully that will then build it out more, but I think you'll see that it's pretty fully featured even as it is. So let's take a quick look around. When you first open DQL Explorer, what you'll see is this page. On the left side, we have saved queries based on the databases they're in. So these are ones that were pre previously built and can be pulled back up. In the center, we have a series of databases that we can create new queries against. Well, let's start with one of the saved queries. So here's one for order numbers between 100 and 200,000. And if I click, you can see that everything comes up I've got everything filled out. I'll come go in more detail in a minute, but you can see 24 matching documents. I click view results. Here are all the documents. Just that easy. Okay, so let's build our own query and, and, and see sort of how that's done. I click on new query at the top. I choose the database I want. I'm going to do it out of that same database. And I want to see this year's, uh, this year's orders for a couple of the sales reps that worked for me. So I'll say call it 2019 orders for Julie and Gordon. This is the name that'll, that'll be saved underneath. I'm going to query forms, but although I, but I could do views or folders in the database. And the form that I care about is one called orders. First thing I'm going to do is add a condition, and right here I can select fields. These are fields that are in that orders form, and you can tell that because if I change forms here, what you'll see is that I get a very different list of fields. This, this Form 1 has a lot more fields, but that's not the form I want. I care about orders right now. And the first thing I want to know is, you know, dates of beginning of the year and forward. So 119, so greater than or equal to the January 1st of 19. But I also want to make sure that it's only the orders for Julie and Gordon, because they're the folks that work for me. So I'm going to add a group. This first one was a condition. Now I'm going to add a group, and you can tell it by the gray background. These are things that are going to be contained in a parentheses, if you want to think of it that way. And so my first condition is that the salesperson is Julie Leach. Whoops. Or, add another condition. So I've got some choices here, and, or, and, not, or, not. But this is just or. The salesperson equals Gordon Smith. And what, what information do I want to get back? Well, I want to know when it was created, what's the order number, what's, who's the salesperson, part number, and so on. Okay, run the query. I get six documents back. Well, let's see what they are. Here they are. All right, so these are automatically presented for me. You can see the dates all correspond to being later than January 1st, which is good. It's only Julie and Gordon, so I got that right. Um, I can sort and do some things, so I could look at date origin and, and sort this alphabetically if I want, in this case in date order. Um, some of these columns have the ability to even group, so salesperson is something that I can group. So if I choose that, you can see now I have all Gordon's orders together and I have all Julie's together. So very easily I can save this sort of information. I can download it to a CSV file so I can upload it back into Excel or whatever I'm using. Um, if a JSON file makes more sense to you, we can do that as well. You can see both of these have been downloaded. And more importantly, I can do a couple other things. I can save it and I can share it. Let's share first so that I can share with either individuals or with the public. And I have the choice of who, is this somebody who can just use the query or someone can actually modify the query. So I'm going to let Dimitri go ahead and modify it. And I'll let Andrew at least use it. So I'll save that, save the query. And just that easily, you can see that it's now been added over here into my list. If I go away and let's say I were to go to a different query, whatever this is, if I come back and click on this, here I'm back having exactly the order and the query that I had before. I run it again without touching anything. I still get my six documents. Of course, this is something that because it's 2019 orders, I may care about this over a period of time. So I could build this one query and come back to it once a week, once a month, whatever makes sense for what I'm trying to do, and just that easily have the data and put it into my spreadsheet or into my analytics program or whatever it is that I'm using. Well, this information is, is being saved. These queries are being saved 
uh, and some of the information regarding which databases we're going to use is all contained in a nodes database and I, before I go over there I just want to show you one quick thing there's a, there, this is a very short list of databases and there are of course many more than this actually on our server the reason for this is because I specified over in the database which I'll show you in a second that what I wanted to see were two different things one I wanted to see any database that was in a folder that had underscore dir in the folder name which got me these two and then I specified three file names that I cared about CRM demo v2.nsf which got me these two quotes.nsf which got me these two and wine tastings 2.1 nsf which got me this one now let's go over to notes and I'll show you how that's all set up okay now we're over in the notes database and this is my DQL Explorer database. This is something that most of your users would never actually see and, and not have to work with. But if you're an administrator, you might. And so you can see here that uh, here's, here's my new uh, query that I just created over in the DQL Explorer. And here are the other queries that we were seeing. If I go and look at this, you'll see that it's mostly the stuff that we already knew about, the collection name, the database, the forms, the, and so on. Here's the actual query. Now, it doesn't look like much to us, but it's what the DQL Explorer needs to know. More importantly, what you can see is down here, we have the people, the readers and the authors. So this, this respects the notes uh, security model. And so we have a couple of, we have three roles that have been set up automatically, DQLX, admin, readers, and authors. And so that's an easy way to set up folks that are going to be able to see things in every database. And then you can see that it by default creates, puts my name in as an author because I'm the one that created the request. And if you recall, I added Dimitri as also an author and I added Andrew as a reader. So we can see very easily that all of those were added. Uh, if you look at the properties of these fields, you'll see that these, this is a reader's field and this is an author's field, just as you would expect it to be. Now I mentioned that the way we got the number of databases that show up in my choices were configured and that's back here in two different uh, lookup documents. There's directories to search and this is the directions here explained it includes full or partial names of directories containing databases that should be included. So I mentioned underscore dir. Well the only folder that I've got that matches up to that is a underscore dir but this would match b underscore dir or underscore directory anything that has the underscore dir in it and it would include all of the the databases that are down inside that the other thing that i did as i mentioned is i specified three file names and here i'm not using a path i'm just using the actual file name and again we will get as you saw over in the example earlier we'll get any database that has that file name regardless of path the rest of its path so regardless of which folder it may be in and we saw a couple of examples of that earlier so this is actually really pretty simple um, not not a whole lot you have to know here because this is actually just kind of running in the background and supporting what's being run over on the other side in the DQLX Explorer or DQL Explorer so hopefully this is uh, giving you at least an idea of how to start with this it's uh, pretty straightforward. There are a lot of features built into it. it lets you build some fairly complex queries. Um, the final thing that I want to show you, again, we'll go back to the DQL Explorer, and I want to show you what's in there for developers. Okay, we're back in DQL Explorer, and let's go back to the query that we already made earlier. What I haven't shown you so far is this little option down at the bottom called Developer Options. And if I open that up, what you'll see is, for a variety of different languages, the code you need to make this work. So in straight DQL, for instance, this query that we have here is ordered like this. Form equals orders, date origin is January 1st, and in parentheses, salesperson is Julie or salesperson equals Gordon. Pretty straightforward. If you like to write Java, well, here's an example of how to write this query in Java. Or Node, here it is in Node. Or Lotus Script, if you prefer Lotus Script and you want to use the, the, the new DQL functions in Lotus Script. 
Um, you can even test your code on the Domino console. Copy this code out, post, paste it into your Domino console, assuming you have console access, and it will at least it will tell you how many documents it finds. So it's an easy way to kind of make sure that your query is working the way you expect it to. And finally, we've leveraged the DQL explain capabilities. When I run explain, it runs the query that's up here, and you can see all of the things that it's done. How long it took, so overall, half a second, uh, six docs, found six docs, and, and then here's each step that it took. And so through this, you can, if, if you have a query that's running a lot longer than you expect it to, this will give you an opportunity to see what, which parts of your query are taking so long and maybe find a way to optimize it to improve the performance. So a pretty complete solution. We've got developer options down here. We have a relatively easy way to build even somewhat sophisticated queries up above. You can save them. You can share them with other people and add readers and authors in. Um, if you don't share, by the way, except for folks that have the admin or the authors or the readers roles, your queries will be private to you. Uh, so. We think this is a great start, a great introduction to what DQL can do, and a, the beginning, at least, of a platform for non-programmers to be able to have access and get value from this language, as well as programmers. Thanks very much for your time, and good luck with your DQL exploring.